I want to welcome you to the last part of our series of the Sermon on the Mount. My name is Mike. I'm our Francewood campus pastor. I'm so honored to be with you here. So by now you've heard our campus pastors teach about Jesus' announcement that he was turning the world upside down. He taught things like, you're blessed if you are persecuted because of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. You're the light of the world, let your light shine. There was a song written on that. He taught on divorce and promises. Jesus even taught us how to love our enemies. He also said, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own worries. Instead, live one day at a time. So as we enter our last part of our life group series, I want you to think really hard about what was the one topic of teaching throughout this whole series that impacted you the most and why. All right, now I wanna invite you to get your Bible out and your listening guide and follow along with me. But before we begin, I wanna pose one last question. What does it take for someone to be a Christian? I mean, if we put a fish or a sticker or a cross sticker on the back of our car, or, or maybe we go on Instagram, Twitter, or some type of social media deal and put God first, hashtag Jesus is the best, hashtag I love God, does that make them a Christian? Does growing up in a Christian home make you a Christian? Or maybe it means, uh, maybe if you go to church every weekend and periodically volunteer, does that make you a Christian? So I want you to hold on to that question for just a minute. Let's jump into the last part of the Sermon on the Mount. Now, Jesus begins what I would call quite possibly one of the hardest teachings, if not the hardest teaching in the entire Bible. Jesus says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. In verse 22, he says it like this, Many will say to me on that day, that day, meaning the day we meet Jesus face to face, uh, often referred to as judgment day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles, then I will tell you plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. That's tough. I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. But according to Jesus, these people called on his name, and they thought they were doing good in God's name. They thought they were living a good life. They thought they were doing good deeds in his name. Isn't that enough to be a Christian? I mean, I grew up in churches and, and listened to TV preachers and social media preachers, and oftentimes that's what they make me feel like. That's all it takes to be a Christian. This is so hard to hear, right? I mean, doesn't the Bible tell us in Romans 10, 13, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved? Well, according to Jesus, it is all who call upon his name, but also those who are transformed and live to do his will, which are called disciples. Which brings us to our first point. A Christian is a disciple. For Jesus, there's no distinction between a Christian and a disciple. There's no separate category for casual Christians either. In fact, when Jesus teaches us about discipleship, he says in John 8, 31, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciple, if you hold to my teaching. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he says this, all authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. We can't lead someone someplace we're not going. Luke 9, 23, he even says this, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. How often? Daily and follow me. Which brings me to my second point. A disciple of Jesus is a learner or a follower. They serve, they worship, and they witness. The typical definition of disciple is a person who obeys the teachings of another. It's simply a follower or learner. It refers to someone who takes up the ways of someone else. Now, if you apply this definition to Jesus, a disciple is someone who learns from him to live like him, someone who, because of God's good, amazing grace, conforms his or her words and ways to the words and ways of Jesus. Or you might say, as others have put in the past, Disciples of Jesus are like little Christ themselves. They model Jesus. What did Jesus do? Number one, he served. He served everyone around him, the poor, the lame, the helpless, the hopeless. He even said he came to serve and not be served. So as a disciple of Christ or a Christian, we serve like Jesus. It's why at New Hope Church, every single weekend, we invite people to serve on all parts of our church. We invite you to be a part of micromissions. It's not because we need you to do that, but because of who you are called to be in Christ. Secondly, Jesus worshiped. He worshiped. Jesus often demonstrates to us what it looks like to be a disciple by worshiping his heavenly Father. 
Therefore, you too are called to worship like Jesus. In our context, this means we go to church, we read our Bibles, we pray. According to Romans 12, 1, it teaches us that worship is a 24-hour experience. It's a way of living, which means the moment you wake up, the way you take care of your body, the way you take care of your mental health, the way you do your job, the way you raise your kids, the way you drive in traffic at 5 p.m. and live your life is all a form of worship. And third, he witnessed. In Greek, the word witness means martyr. Martyrs were people who died for their faith in Christ. They saw what Jesus had done, and so they were compelled to tell the story of God's transforming loves in their lives. There is no such thing as a private relationship that no one knows about. Your love for Jesus should cause you, should compel you to tell others about Christ no matter the cost. You are called, like Jesus, to be a witness. Think about it like this. So I've been driving the same car for about 16 years. Don't feel bad for me. I'm about to hit the 230,000 mile marker. And well, lately, I've been trying to make some updates, been trying to upgrade it. So I've been spending hours and hours in my garage working under the hood. Truth be known, don't tell anybody, but it makes me feel super manly working on my car. But listen, just because I go into my garage and I open the hood of my car and I work on it, it doesn't make me a mechanic. Mechanics spend many years and hours training and educating themselves to master their craft. I'm modifying my car based on the skill of real mechanics, utilizing YouTube University. Finally, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29, Jesus said, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Which brings me to my last point. A disciple of Jesus builds his foundation on God's word. I'm going to say that one more time. A disciple of Jesus builds his foundation on God's word. So I didn't have much growing up. I guess you could say we were poor, but my family liked to play cards, so I just came up with creative ways to use them. I would take these cards and I would throw them all together and uh, mix them up. I'm sure my family wasn't too happy about that, but we would make these incredible multi-level houses. Uh, I'd search all over the house, find them. But to be successful at this, you first had to, you know, build a strong foundation. I mean, they're cards. That foundation is, the criti- is critical to all the, the next levels of the house going up. I can tell you a secret. Don't tell anybody else. After several hours and, and, and moments of building, every single one of those houses came crashing down. Why, you might ask? Because the foundation was weak. I could turn and twist those cards, but it didn't matter. It was a house of cards. It was doomed from the very beginning. Reality is this. The world will offer you many ways to build your foundation on today. Let's see. There's education. There's politics. There's wealth, status, fame, fortune. You may be a great athlete, athleticism, talent, even hard work, right? There's the culture and many other ways. Now, let me make it clear. There's nothing wrong with all of these things. Okay, maybe politics, but we won't get into that. But if you build your foundation of your life on these things, they are no better than a house of cards. In fact, Jesus says it like this, you're foolish. And will eventually, the storms of life, they will come. That is guaranteed. And your house will come come crumbling down. But Jesus says, if you you put his words into practice, you are like a wise person with a strong foundation that will not be destroyed no matter what trial comes your way. Truth is this, listen. In this story, you had two guys working hard to build two houses, two different different foundations. They both had the best set of blueprints. They both obviously had skill. They had the most incredible master architect of all time, Jesus. He'd given them the exact instructions for success, and yet only one was wise enough to follow his instruction. Why? Because only one built their life on God's word, the rock. Only one trusted. Only one was a true disciple. I can't tell you the amount of times people have come up to me after a sermon, after church, and they're upset with something we read from the Bible. I mean, we're reading God's word, but it often offends people, people who even call themselves Christians. It's because they've only adopted parts of the Bible. 
They fit the, their, the narrative of their lifestyle to those verses, the ones that they're comfortable with. Jesus' goal isn't to just make folks better people, but to make disciples. And Jesus wants to, people who are committed to making disciples. So just a quick recap. A Christian is a disciple. For Jesus, there's no distinction between the two. A disciple of Jesus is a learner or a follower. They serve, they worship, and we witness. Number three, a disciple of Jesus builds his foundation on God's word. I want to thank you for spending this time investing in your relationship with Christ. I believe if you are leaning into God and you are studying these teachings, then you're probably a good disciple. And I want you to know as a church family, we're proud of you. And so is God. Would you join me in prayer? And let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray in the Sermon on the Mount. Join me, please. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace. God bless you.